Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed our beginning music it's the best I could afford with these free videos. Uh, anyway, my name is Dan Powers with Sirius Computer Solutions Group. And what we're going to talk to you today is managing Windows 11 adoption uh, and leveraging Tamium as your endpoint management service. Now, what are we doing with this? Well, it's hard to imagine that Windows 10 is actually six years old at this point already. It seems like we were just going through this whole process. And of course, the end of life of Windows 7 was January 14th, 2020. That's really only a little bit over a year ago. Um, and we helped a lot of customers make that move from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Unfortunately, I think a lot of customers uh, waited too long to the end of life before they adopted Windows 10. And there was a lot of hurdles, right? If you guys remember back, um, BIOS was a big update. We kind of had to move that into UEFI mode. People didn't even know what that was. 64-bit uh, operating system is really where you wanted to be. Uh, all your old legacy 32-bit operating systems kind of needed to be reloaded, right? You need to wipe that device and make that move to 64-bit. Um, but as we look at it, Windows 11 is coming out in October, October 5th, I do believe. And while Windows 10 end of life will be for a couple more years, Windows 11 is being released. There will be new machines will come with it. And as we always said, we think preparing your customers for what this looks like uh, is going to help you out at the end of the day. Let's help that cause. There's a total new interface with Windows 11. And of course, some of their requirements are a little bit different. So we said, man, eh, let's look into this. Best way to start or to plan what we need to do is have clear visibility of where you're going and understand where you're at. So with that, Windows, uh, to adopt Windows 11, you need to have your Windows 10 machines at 64-bit and at least at the latest ver version currently, which is 2004 of the Windows 10 platform. Then it can actually do an in-place upgrade to Windows 11. You want to have at least four gigabytes of memory. Most production environments probably have more. You may want a little more, but again, we're going to stick with what Microsoft says is the bare minimum. You want to have at least 64 gigabytes of disk space on your system drive where Windows 10 is currently installed. Shouldn't be a problem for most places, but this it will be a requirement and you'll actually need a little more than 64 gigabytes especially if you have to push down, you know, the four or five gigabyte uh, ISO image of Windows 11 and do the upgrade itself. Of course, as we had mentioned, which again, a year ago, a few years back, we helped a lot of customers understand, you know, what's the difference between UEFI and legacy CMS and BIOS, uh, what comes with secure booting, so you can take advantage of some of those Windows 10 security features. But this is now a requirement. Uh, Windows 10, it was a high suggestion, um, but you didn't have to do it under Windows 11. You have to be under UEFI. Your machines do have to be secure booting. Uh, to do the upgrade to Windows 11. So we're going to take a look and see how customers are faring there. Uh, TPM 2.0, this is probably the biggest change. In Windows 10, we did want to activate that TPM chip. We had to do a lot of BIOS updating on a lot of devices uh, so that they could support UEFI, they could support TPM. But at the time, a few years back, we were at version 1.2, 1.5 maybe. Uh, TPM 2.0, I did a Google check out there, and for the past six months, a lot of vendors are coming out with new BIOS, so you're going to have to deal with updating your BIOSes once again. And lastly, as we know, you're going to need a uh, you know, video driver, right? Uh, Windows is becoming more and more a video-type machine, uh, you know, whether that's handheld, whether that's using a stylus, whatever, but you, we want that Direct X 12 and a uh, version 2 WDD driver to take full advantage of Windows 11. So how can we do this? Well, if any of you were around way back when we helped our customers migrate to Windows 10, we came up with an automated way of doing this. And again, understanding where you are, where you needed to go, and then we could define the steps of how to get there. And we can kind of do this readiness assessment to say, hey, this is how difficult it's gonna be based on your information to get there. Again, 
recall we had to do, deal with a lot of 32-bit operating systems. Most all machines were in legacy BIOS mode. Some of those devices had to be wiped out, even if the hardware was capable of running Windows 10. That meant we had to deal with the user profiles and all that information before we wiped the machine. But that did help us help our customers adopt things like Office 365, OneDrive, and basically just have a much better end user experience. But we figured we would dust this off and kind of reformat it a little bit to do a Windows 11 adoption. Why not? Uh, again, we understand the requirements for Windows 11. Now all we need to do, quite honestly, is to leverage, in this case, this video is around Tanium, is how do we let Tanium help us understand and create a readiness report like this. So with that, folks, that's just what we're going to do. We're going to dive into my Tanium lab, and we're going to take a look. Well, what does it take to gather the information so we can understand where we sit in regards to Windows 11 adoption? All right, folks. So now that we're in the Tanium console, this is just a HTML5 web interface. So for those of you that are not familiar with Tanium, um, I'm not going to go through everything, but different modules that you might own, like Asset, Deploy, Deploying the Software, Patch Management, all these type of things show up here on this screen, and you could drill into them. But really what I'm going to do, since we're looking for information about our endpoints, right, probably specifically around the Windows 10 stuff, I'm going to drill into Asset just to say, oh, it's here just by default. You know, total number of assets in my lab, um, age of my assets, and then I have a lot of different type of reports. So it's kind of interesting. I can come in and do a physical machine summary, right? Yep. I got my Windows devices. I can see my manufacturers and models. As we saw, that's going to be important from for us. So, all right, that's cool. The information is here, if you will, inside of Tanium very easily. Platform summary, uh, are they virtual or not? So I know how many machines are virtual, how many of my machines are actually physical. Windows 10 devices, so I can deal with. That's awesome. Um, and I also have just this like all asset type of report, um, which as you notice, there's quite a bit of decent information, the computer name, its serial number, its platform operating system, but not everything that I really wanted for um, the Windows 10 report, right, which we needed from Microsoft. So what are some of the things we were talking about? Well, um, we did want to get the operating system um, build number or, or the operating system build, right? So I can get the full operating system build. Remember, when we go from Windows 10 to Windows 11, we have to be at a certain version of the Windows 10 operating system. So, yeah, the information is going to be here. All right, that's going to be awesome. We did talk about some TPM information, as we had discussed before. So, Tanium already has some of this information in here. Are the machines on, you know, TPM? Is it turned on? Um, what type of TPM status do we have? Even the version of it, right? As we start seeing my machines responding. So, we're getting a lot of this information is just right out of the box. And the BIOS information, as I mentioned, since we're probably going to have to update uh, TPM, we may have to look at BIOS by year. So I'm just going to drill into the year version here, and we can start seeing my machines in my lab are going to start answering in that real-time fashion with Tanium's linear chain. Remember, those that you don't know, when we're typing here, this information that's coming back is always real-time. Uh, because of the way Tanya works very quickly, I can ask these questions in very, very real time. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Interact module. has a lot of reports for me uh, by the type of categories, the different type of built-in dashboards. But I had already started my own uh, Windows 10 assessment, so I'm just going to drill right into it here. Now, this is not everything I'm going to need yet, but it's a good start, right? I know my operating system. Windows 10 versus the servers, which I'm going to filter out. I even think, I, yep, Windows 7 machines. If you still have Windows 7 in your environment, we do want to know about those. We do want to plan on getting rid of them, obviously. We have the build number of your operating system, the BIOS release year, which I think is going to be important. Again, when we talk about TPM, the total memory. 
so we can obviously come in and find any machines that don't meet the bare minimum of Windows 11. Don't really think we'll find every. Uh, free disk space, as we had mentioned. But notice, I have some machines right off the bat. They're not going to be able to go to Windows 11. I don't have enough free space, so I want to know this information. I got information about my video graphics card. I have a lot of information about TPM, as we discussed. And remember, look at all these guys that are 1.2, 1.5 TPM. They have to be at TPM 2.0 uh, to, to be able to move. And if I notice some of these, their BIOS years aren't that old, 2017, 2016, 2018. Um, and they're still at you know 1.2 TPM. So we're going to have to create packages via Tamium to understand, again, where we need to be to adopt Windows 11 and where we are today. So we're going to continue working on this inside the Tanium environment. And really what my goal here, and I didn't do it yet, but I'm going to in another video, is we're going to build some nice trend trends. And we're going to build some reports all around the Windows 11 adoption and how we can leverage Tanium to make that life easier. So thank you for listening, folks. If you have any questions about this, uh, whether it's Windows 10, whether it's Office 365, Tanium itself, please reach out to us here at Sirius. We would love to help you. Again, thank you for listening. My name is Dan Powers at Sirius Computer Solutions.
All right, folks. So as I mentioned, I was going to run this as a client of mine. Now, to be fair, we didn't do his whole environment. We did like one third of it where we targeted, but I'm imagining these numbers are going to run through. So um, again, pretty good job. Most machines are UFI enabled, uh, still some with BIOS, uh, but as we fear TPM versions, um, I was surprised actually how many are still 1.2, quite a few 1.5. CPM 2.0, but what's interesting is the, the BIOS years don't go back that far. Um, and again, if I look at the raw data, and I don't want to share all their data, just a summary, but even some of the vendors that have BIOS dates of 2019, which was kind of when we did their Windows 10 upgrade, um, they're in the 2.5, couple, one or two and 1.2. So, Man, you really have to update the BIOS. That's something that you're going to have to do to get to TPM 2.0. Um, secure boot. Okay. Well, not as many as I was hoping that we're actually running uh, secure boot. Uh, they're at least UFI enabled, so switching to secure boot would be fairly easy to do. But again, you do want to understand where your security posture is and, and highly, I do believe Windows 11 is, is going to be a requirement that you're secure booted. So work to be done. <clears throat> uh, Windows versions, we got some in the green. Obviously, this, these guys can go, that one. Most of them are at 1909 in their environment. I know talking to them during the pandemic, people going home, they didn't aggressively keep the desktops up to date, something that they're going to have to deal with. Um, but hey, I'll, again, long way to go before they adopt Windows 11. Um, and an interesting part, he was surprised that um, low disk space drive because they should be using OneDrive and, and that was an adoption that they had moving to Windows 10 and Office 365. So kind of interesting. I'd have to dive in deeper what is taking up the space. Currently the system drive is uh, needs to have some some tools run on it. Again, we could do that with Big Fix, clean up that system drive so they could actually run Windows 11. Um, and for the heck of it, I just kind of looked at the hardware vendors. I know when we originally did it, they had a lot of machines that were incompatible. They did have to buy new hardware, get rid of some of that old stuff, and they kind of standardized on Lenovo. But I see some Microsoft Surface Pros out there. So I didn't run the full suite. You know, we didn't really look for 32 versus 64 bit. I think we probably would have found a couple because he knew there were some exception machines, like we said. Um, but Interesting enough, you know, it's going to Windows 11 isn't just going to be a walk in the park. There's going to be some work you're going to have to do. And I just think you're going to want to know this information um, sooner than later. So, again, if you need any help, please let us know here at Sirius. We would love to help you no matter what tools you're using on your journey for Windows adoption to 11 and the whole Microsoft Office 365. Five suite in general. Again, my name is Dan Powers. I appreciate the time you spent with me today. Have a great day.